Welcome Rogers to part two of this spec point. In this video, we're going to be concentrating on what product inhibition is and inactive precursors in metabolic pathways. So for starters, product end product inhibition, this is where I have the end product of an enzyme pathway. So the end product, and what happens is this end product acts as an inhibitor for the initial enzyme. Now by acting as an inhibitor and buying binding to an allosteric site so not to the active site so by acting as a non-competitive inhibitor what happens here is that my end product inhibits the initial enzyme preventing any more substrate from binding or forming an enzyme substrate complex with my enzyme so it's like the product will effectively stop the product production of more end product uh, and this is end product inhibition. Now, I've only really seen this in a multiple choice question. It is not very popular on the exam. Um, the other one that we need to be familiar with is an inactive precursor. And an inactive precursor is basically where I have um, an enzyme that is inactive. And it can, can become active by, it might be due to a transcription factor or it might be due to a part of that protein, because an enzyme is a protein, it might be a part of that protein that's been removed to reveal the active site so that it can become active. So really all we need to know here is that an inactive precursor is an inactive enzyme that can be made active. And like I said, this does link into a year 13 topic to do with transcription factors and um, turning on and off certain genes. Uh, but guys, that's pretty much everything that you need to know there on inhibitors and um, the different parts of the inhibition involved. Good luck with your exam.